Okay, this here is a electrical modification that has to be done on Ranger built Cobra 148s. Um, that would be uh, anything that says made in Malaysia or made in the Malaysia on the back. Uh, one example would be, like, say, a Cobra 148F right here. Uh, these radios, if you open them up in their default configuration, and uh, try to get more power out of them than what they're, you know, originally made to handle. There, uh, they will cause the PLL to FM, or you'll get a little bit of a warble on sideband. They become unstable. So there is a modification you electrically have to do to the radio itself in order to prevent that from happening. Um, this right here is actually a unit inbuilt 148 board and you see this transformer right here. Well that's actually a choke, it's not really a transformer. And in the unit in design what this choke does here is it cleans up RF coming through the power going to the audio circuit. So you got the TA7222 chip that's right over here. All of the power that connects to pin 1 on that particular chip right here goes through that choke. And then the the uh, 3756, which is over here, gets its power directly from the DC jack on the back of the radio. So it bypasses that choke. The uh, 3756 gets full power from the back of the radio. On the unit, or on the Ranger built radios, they actually made a modification to that, which wasn't a modification for the better. They run all of the power through this choke right here, this transformer. Um, that's the power to the audio chip plus also the power to the rest of the radio to the voltage switch regulator right here that powers the rest of the radio. What happens is that when the radio is in stock configuration that's all fine, everything gets good power, but if you get more wattage out of the radio than what it came from the factory was doing, then the extra current that flows through this transformer, this choke right here, will actually cause a voltage drop. And when that does that, that plays havoc with the PLL circuitry being, you know, the, the VCO loses lock. It might start shifting in frequency, and that, that results in a warble or an FM condition. And, of course, people aren't able to clarify you in. They, they say you sound like you're off frequency, and, you know, they, nobody can get a lock on you because your radio's frequency modulating or it's frequency drifting while you're talking. So there's a modification to this radio that you must make. And, and this would be any board that has this, uh, that starts with the EPT right down here. If you have a radio with a unit in board, it's going to say PC412 or, you know, whatever. So the modification is done on the back of the radio, and you're going to notice right here, there's a trace that connects pin 1 of the TA7222 to pin 2 of the MB3756. So all of the power comes off of that choke through the 7222 pin 1 here down to this, right, this part right here. Fortunately, the fix for this is pretty simple. Excuse me, I'm holding a camera with my hand. You're going to notice that on the other side of the board here, there's a spot for J44, which is right here, but there's no shunt installed on this, on that across those two points. So you'll see on the back of the radio, I've got it marked on the back of the board right here. You want to put a jumper shunt right across there. That will supply power to this section right here directly from the back of the radio. And then you want to take this part of the trace that's right here. I'm drawing on it with this pen. And you want to cut that. You want to you want to cut that so that there's no continuity between this and right this, or, and this part right here. Once you get that done, then the radio will perform the way Uniden originally designed it to perform back in the late 70s, so that all the power to the radio itself comes through the back of the radio, whereas the power going through the to the audio chip is actually filtered through that choke which is a design. Now this modification allows you to run more power. Suppose you want to run an NPC mod or something to the radio. That way it will remain stable on uh, sideband. 
Now this right here is a Cobra 148F that I actually performed that modification on a couple years back. You'll see right here where I'm pointing the shunt that I installed right there for J44. And then if you flip the radio over here, you'll see where I actually cut the trace with a screwdriver right here so there's no more trace. Anyways, that's all you really got to do. And you can see right here this radio has been NPC modded and it's 100% it's rock solid stable on sideband. So that's what you got to do in order to get these RCIs to work stable on frequency once you open them up. Hopefully that helps you out. Thanks for watching my video.